Here's a look at some of those times when contestants put their worst foot forward in the MasterChef kitchen, specifically with their awful dishes. Service is over and I'm not serving that And well, this particular dish from season eight sent Ramsay spiraling. All right, so episode seven kicked off at the Peninsula Hotel in Beverly Hills. A restaurant that today is being taken over by all of you home cooks. The contestants were eager to take over the kitchen and were tasked with the responsibility of serving breakfast to the hotel guests. Let's hope they do better than that massive glob of eggs they put out at the hotels I've been to. Anyway, Kate and Yashika were named captains for this challenge, thanks to their stellar performance in the lamb challenge. But would they be able to match the same energy as before? Well, Kate seemed to have a few doubts. Name one person that you wouldn't want on your team. I'm gonna go with Jeff. She didn't want Jeff to be on her team, and well, she had her reasons for it. Jeff, he doesn't take direction. He kind of just likes to be a little arrogant. Yeah, I think she was pretty clear about that one. On the flip side, Yashika was steering clear of Jennifer, worried about her tendency to crack under pressure and for not being, well, refined enough. But then came the twist. The team captains are not in control of which teams you get. At this point, Yashika started to feel like she was the underdog, but she was confident. After all, she was used to working under pressure. I know that we can work together and I can lead this team to victory. As for Kay, time would tell. And just as the chefs made a call and lined up behind their respective captains, Arone spiced things up by revealing the challenge. You will be in cooking five stunning breakfast dishes and all made to order. The cooks had five mouthwatering breakfast dishes to put together, all made to order. It could be anybody's game right now. With 60 minutes of prep time on the board, they were introduced to the menu. Lemon ricotta pancakes, eggs benedict, potato waffles and lobster, a classic American breakfast, and a three egg omelet. Pretty staple stuff, if a bit fancy. Well, once they got down to it, Yashika jumped right into action handing out tasks and keeping things all under control. But I can't say the same for Kate. We have lemon ricotta pancakes. Um, we'll get those done at, at the end. She wasn't exactly putting her team to the best use, and Arone had some valid concerns about it. My concern with the red team is gonna be not enough soldiers, yeah. too many leaders. As for the blue team, Ramsey was pretty hopeful. They may not look the most dynamic, but I think you've got the stronger cooks in the blue this morning. After all, they had age and experience to their advantage, although organization seemed to be a major issue. With both teams battling it out with each other and with contrasting issues, the challenge could go either way. But once the orders started coming in, Yashika's blue team was on a roll, while Kate still wasn't able to pull the red team together. Um, we need, uh, for here we need the tomato, no, I'm sorry. Clearly the pressure and a whole lot of doubt were getting to her. Things got so intense that Ramsey actually had to intervene before things got completely unsalvageable. Kate, turn the gas on! We're standing there cooking, there's not even a gas on! Well, now they were cooking with gas at least. Meanwhile, Yashika was on top of the world, focused on sending out each and every dish perfectly. She was confident that her team could easily crush the competition. Speaking of, a handful of minutes into the service, the red team had only managed to serve one table for two. While Kate was constantly barking out orders, none of them really hit the mark. Adam. Yes, chef. The lobster, it's raw. From raw lobster to disastrous omelets, you name it, they screwed it up. The red team was crumbling under the pressure, putting Ramsey's reputation on the line. If you can't cook two omelets side by side, untie your apron and give it to me now. Ramsey flat out told the team to change their captain if they wanted to stand any chance at redemption. And this is when an unlikely player stepped up to take the job. Nico, stay over there on waffles. Adam, we can use you on a grill. You can produce a better pancake. With Ebony in charge, the red team crossed their fingers that the new boss would be a whole heck of a lot better than the old boss. Over in the blue team's neck of the woods, Yashika's fears came true when Jennifer started to crack under the pressure. They're not perfect. Wow. These eggs are not good. And Ramsey wasn't impressed. Two minutes, take that back. She killed the take whole that table. Back. Take that back. At this point, Yashika had no time for babysitting and she had to literally shake up her team to pull off a comeback. Stop. 
Stop. Blue team, switch. And Jennifer, back up Jenny. And that was doubly important because Ebony turned out to be a pretty good leader. So much so that even Christina couldn't help but point it out. You guys, the food's looking great. Keep Thank it you, up. Chef. Thank you, Chef. At the same time, Ramsey was still battling it out with the blue team as Jeff tried to step up and be the leader that nobody asked for. And certainly not Ramsey. Blue team. Okay. No, no, so it's, it's not okay. But when Jeff tried to argue back, Ramsey chewed him out for the subpar food he was dishing out. Don't sort of send me your again, because I look a bigger dick than you. However, Jeff just couldn't process what Ramsey was saying. And so, Ramsey decided to make it crystal clear for him. I look a bigger dick than you. But that wasn't the end of it. As the wait times kept growing, Ramsey suggested that the team would have to restart the orders if they took any longer. Despite that little warning, the red team was on a collision course with complete disaster. When Ramsey called out for the same dish for the fourth time, Jennifer wasn't too thrilled about it. She could took me off egg, but now she goes to egg, she's not even able to make an egg. Jennifer believed that she could have done better with the eggs, but now that she had no control over them, she was sure that the team was completely doomed. I mean, seriously, how could they mess up something as simple as eggs? Yet again, yes, I got a go. plate full of snot. However, Ramsey wasn't about to give up, but I mean, maybe he should have. I need two breakfast cooks with some respect. He ordered the same dish for the fifth and final time. Now, mind you, I'm talking about the same two orders for the last 45 minutes, and the team was scrambling to finish. Come on, guys! I'm dragging on two eggs! Ten, yes, nine, <laughs> Scrambling. Seriously, though, the pressure was on. But when another round of awful eggs hit the pass, Ramsey was forced to face facts. They were cooked. Not the eggs, but the team. So he threw in the towel and shut the kitchen down. But honestly, it was inevitable. No! Service is over, and I'm not serving that. Yashika was disappointed in herself for failing her team, especially with the pretty good start they got off to. I feel horrible. I let my team down. Meanwhile, the red team pulled off an insane comeback. When Ramsey has words of wisdom for you, you better take it seriously. If not, you're gonna fail. Just like how this next contestant did after ignoring Ramsey's warning. It was season 13, episode six. And like all great disasters in the making, it took place during the first mystery box challenge of the season, featuring... Lift. <laughs> Don't let those simple apples fool you, though. It wasn't gonna be easy. Now, here's a quick reminder for context. The contestants were divided into groups based on regions in America. The Midwest, the South, the Northeast, and the West. Although each of them had their own take on what they would create, Kyle was bestowed with the power to choose a flavor for each region, meaning two regions would have to cook sweet dishes, and two others, savory. And since the decision was in Kyle's hands, he had to make his next couple of moves very carefully. Can I presume we would like savory. So then the question is, who's the second savory? He intended to have the Midwest, his home turf, working with savory that challenge. So let's move on to the Northeast, Kyle. So I think they're going to be cooking sweet tonight. The South and Northeast regions were given sweet. He considered them rivals, so he figured the sciency elements of baking might throw them off their game. But before making the final call, Kyle huddled up with his regional squad before settling on savory. Anyway, since Kyle felt the West wasn't much of a threat, he grew graciously allowed them to go with savory too. But despite what Kyle was thinking and feeling, it wasn't going to be super smooth sailing for them. At least, not all of them. It's a harissa rub scallops, and we're gonna have an apple and fennel uh, puree. That's Wayne, the wild card entry from the Midwest team. For context, he was crossing his fingers and hoping Kyle would give them sweet. But obviously, he didn't get what he wanted. So Wayne opted for couscous, a risky move considering his past experience with Risotto. Don't, don't, you're not making risotto again, are you? That was enough. <laughs> that risotto would have taken you straight home. And Joe also wasn't too sure about his choice in dish. You know, the, the process with, with couscous is not so different than risotto. Oh, great. He gave him fair warning to make sure the flavors were balanced. Apple would need to take the lead, but not so much as to overpower everything else. A hell of a fine line to walk. Meanwhile, Richie was working with the sweet stuff. You see, Kyle was well aware of Richie's struggles with dessert in the past. 
but this time, it looks like the guy went in with a plan. And I'm doing a honey spice cupcake with an apple filling on top and a tarragon whipped cream. Well, it was an ambitious move, but it quickly became clear that he was in way over his head. And Ramsey warned him to give it another thought. That's a tall order. It is. How are you gonna get the batter done? Have you started the batter? I've just started. The tarts demanded extra time, attention, and care. Things Richie didn't have in spades. But Richie was confident that he could pull a miracle out of his hat. The judges, though, not so much. Richie's cupcakes, they're not even full. They didn't oh, rise. They didn't yeah. rise at all. So they're gonna be dense. Yep. Yeah, missing baking powder was his dish's death knell. The cupcakes were doomed to be horribly dense and unrisen, which is exactly what happened. What's more, he didn't even have enough time to bother with the decorations. But it wasn't just Richie. Kendall was grappling with a catastrophe of his own. I mean, it can't be that bad, right? They're churros, after all. Like pizza, bad churros are still at least pretty good. Well, Kendall served up the first awful churros in the history of mankind, considering he switched up two of the most important ingredients. There's salt on there. There's salt. But they're like salty like french fries. There's no sugar on these. Reagan had one of the classiest reactions, though. Salty churros. You ever heard of that? Baby. Mm. Kendall had gone from plating one of the best dishes not that long ago to presenting the absolute worst of the night. But I'm not done yet. Remember Wayne and his couscous? Well, after seeing Kendall's fall, none of the judges expected Wayne to do any better. And when it was time for him to present his dish, this is what happened. The puree looks smooth and velvety. I like the plating. Top-notch presentation. I pulled a sneaky on you there. Wayne didn't fail at all in the looks department and the taste? Absolutely spot on. Really good job. Thank you. Surprising everyone, including himself, his harissa spice scallops with apple fennel puree practically blew the doors down with how good they were. However, with Jennifer's dish edging him out and taking the top spot for the evening, the southern contestants were safe, including Kendall and his salty excuses for churros. And honestly, he couldn't believe how lucky he got. It's only gonna get more interesting from here, because now it was time to call out the worst dishes of the night. And guess whose dish was called out first? On whipped cream on the side. What are you calling them? Home cakes. Yeah, those cupcakes were such a letdown. But Richie threw a curveball at the judges by giving his dish a different name. Didn't you start calling them cupcakes? Yeah, smart move. They definitely weren't cupcakes, so calling them cupcakes would probably set the judges in an even more foul mood than they already were. Now, all he had to do was admit his baking powder blunder, and he'd be in the clear. But instead, Richie tried to spin the narrative, but the judges weren't buying it. They call them what they became? I'm with Joe here. They had absolutely zero redeeming qualities. But it all comes down to taste. Caramelized. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I'd love to see inside those home cakes. Richie's home cakes sent him on an all expenses paid trip towards elimination. But he wasn't alone. Like, take Charles from the Midwest team, who presented a pan seared red snapper with apple and potato scales. Unfortunately, Charles' biggest slip up was impossible to ignore. I, mean, I didn't know that it was wrong for me to put raw white wine. Surprisingly, the parts without the apple tasted the best. And then came Lizzie, with her pan seared scallops with apple and celery root puree. But she was facing elimination for good reason, too. Cremated the scallops. The scallops weren't just overcooked, they were burnt. The judges now had to find the worst of the bunch. And who else could it have been but. You missed the mark. And whilst you tried to pay homage to. Yeah, if only he had come clean about the missing ingredient, who knows? Maybe he'd have walked away from the mess unscathed. Anyways, what this next contestant had to do is every chef's nightmare. With just 20 minutes left on the clock, Matt realized that his steak was overcooked. Well, you can't uncook something, so he was left with only one thing to do. And now I gotta start over. Ah. Backing up a bit, let me explain what was going on. The contestants were obviously working with beef, 
But what was less obvious was the celebrity judge that showed up to help. Francisco, Superman of Surf and Turf, the legendary. With Michael Mina in the house, the stakes were higher than they already were. But here's the kicker. You won't know what cut you're cooking until you lift. The contestants would have no idea which cut of beef they would be dealing with until they lifted their mystery box. To add some flavor to the challenge, both Ramsey and Michael stepped up to the plate, literally, giving the chefs a cooking demo for some extra inspiration. <laughs> Thank you, chef. Excellent. Now, okay. chef, tell me what's your dish. But with that out of the way, each contestant had a tight one-hour window to create a restaurant-quality dish worthy of any of their restaurants. As the mystery boxes were lifted, Arone had another surprise in store. Only one of you will win a special prize. You get dinner for two. The winner would walk away with a reservation for two at Michael's Restaurant in San Francisco. But all the contestants who couldn't handle the heat would have to face elimination. Now, Matt, armed with the familiar filet, was feeling the pressure, knowing expectations were sky high to get it right. But with less than 20 minutes left, well, we're all caught up now. Overcooked this one. And with that... And now I gotta start over. Let's see if he can pull off the run back. Well, Matt was far from confident going into it. I'm a little disappointed. Mm -hmm. I feel like I got thrown a softball here and I missed. He feared that both fillets were still pretty poorly cooked. But the moment of truth arrived, as it always does, as the judges huddled up to decide who aced the beef challenge and who was on the chopping block. But I'm getting ahead of myself again. Let me show you what happened when Matt presented his filet mignon with porcini vermouth pan sauce, Brussels sprouts, and garlic mashed potatoes. And now for the reveal. There's a big difference between searing and scorching. Michael wasn't impressed by the scorched meat either. Potatoes and Brussels sprouts, and you're just really looking for just simple perfection. Yeah, the run back dream was dead. Here yeah, the components. Despite the critique, Ramsey at least recognized that Matt's seasoning was pretty good, but that wasn't enough to save him from elimination. Hey, for once, it wasn't the seasoning. Color me surprised. Eventually, he headed home, disappointed in himself, but not defeated. I have a lot to learn. Hi, man. But I think my kids are gonna be in. He vowed to continue honing his cooking skills, ready to prove his growth to everyone in the very near future. But not everyone facing defeat hits the right stride. Just like this next contestant from season seven, who miserably failed at replicating Ramsey's signature dish. Master Chef, it's about the quality. And when you're happy to send me stuff. Who's ready for another Gordon Ramsay masterclass? Well, that's exactly what episode six started off with. You will all be responsible for extracting every ounce. The top 16 contestants had to kill poach, and shell a lobster of their very own. A pretty tall order for a bunch of home cooks. The thing that can really look at me with its eyes and just seeing the little legs, ugh. Despite their unfamiliarity, the contestants dove in, attempting to replicate Ramsey's skills, and they had a mere 25 minutes to do so. Given the limited time frame, everyone scrambled to get going and make sure the lobster was plated exactly like Ramsey's, making sure none of that precious meat was destroyed along the way. Do they have what it takes to do? Following Ramsey's lead was just the beginning. The rest was up to each contestant's ability to execute. And interestingly, this wasn't a top three, bottom three sort of situation. You either executed to Ramsey's standards, or you didn't. And if you didn't, well, you can guess where they ended up. But to keep things on brand, I do want to highlight three chefs in particular leading up to the elimination round. And first up... You're not safe. I'm gonna fight for it. Andrea completely forgot the technique Ramsay had shown her and tried to remove the tail with scissors, which obviously didn't go as well as expected. Meanwhile, Nathan had problems of his own. Did the best I could with the time I had. 
but I... Let's not forget about Diamond, a vegetarian, who had to overcome a hell of an aversion to even get the lobster on the plate in the first place. Across this challenge, and you were not comfortable taking all that meat out of the lobster. Interestingly, out of the struggling trio, Diamond actually managed to turn things around. You are safe because you're doing a great job. Oh my gosh, thank you. But moving to the elimination challenge, where replicating Ramsey's signature lobster tortellini became a nearly impossible hill to climb. Ramsey demonstrated the technique once again, but some contestants veered off script. With the broth. You're Sicilian, why don't you make it past the first? Lisa Ann, who had been struggling big time leading up to this moment, hit a new low. Right from the start, she set the stage for disaster by prioritizing her broth over the pasta and just made a complete mess out of everything she touched. And she also added alcohol despite Ramsey's advice to focus on literally anything else. In other words, Lisa Ann's lobster tortellini was far from picture perfect. Clean is burst. And look, it's got no top on it. But that wasn't even the worst part. It's very salty. It's like eating a mouthful of Yeah, the fact she even choked on the salty broth after Ramsay made her taste it is honestly, I don't know, kind of pathetic. Somehow, tasting the dish before presenting it to the judges never crossed her mind. What made it all the worse was her attitude. She completely lashed out at Ramsey when she felt like she was getting put into a corner. Convince. I worked really hard to get here. You have no idea how much. Which left Ramsey with only one thing to say. Telling I'm done you. with excuses. Surprise, Lisa Ann was shown the door that night. Please take off your apron. Despite all the encouragement she got from Ramsey along the way, she left the kitchen defeated and bitter. Heartbroken that I'm leaving the MasterChef kitchen. So I'm sure you've noticed I've been covering some of MasterChef's worst dishes for a while now. I've honestly lost track of how many of these videos I've made, but I love doing them all the same. But if you think I missed out on any more stinkers, make sure to get in the comments and let me know what you want to see me cover. And who knows, I might feature your suggestion in an upcoming video. You could also leave me a message on my social media pages. And don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications while you're at it. And hey, if you thought this video was crazy, wait till you see the next one. It's even crazier.